Welcome back to another episode of Christian Natural Health. Today, I'm excited to have Peggy Ployar with us. Peggy is the SPED Homeschool founder and CEO, an organization that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. She's also the owner of Eternal Aerial Arts, where she teaches aerial arts classes and coaches a student performance team. Peggy's a speaker, aerial performer, podcaster, author, breast cancer survivor, and 19-year retired homeschool veteran. She and her husband, Doug, live in League City, Texas, and enjoy paddleboarding, hiking, and camping in their classic Airstream. Welcome, Peggy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I am excited to be here and just thankful that you um, are having me on your show. <laughs> yeah, so today we're, you wanted to kind of get your story out there as far yeah. as your, your process with breast cancer and how you dealt with that. So first, like, let's back us up and tell yeah. us the story. <laughs> So. It, and it was crazy. You know, I, I'm, I've always kind of bore, been more into natural health. So I kind of avoided the mammogram type of thing right. and found a lump mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like, Oh goodness, what is this? Mm -hmm. And, um, at the same time, my husband's going, you really need to, we really need to prep. There's something going on in China. And I'm like, okay. And so actually I was diagnosed with cancer the same week that everything shut down. It was just insane. And so here, you know, everybody's saying, stay home, stay away from the hospitals. And uh, they're saying, come in. And you, if you don't do what we, we tell you, you're going to do, you're going to die. You know, I'm that, was, that was this pressure that was on me sure. when I was diagnosed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that was the first year of the lockdowns and the, or the, the, at the first week of the lockdowns mm -hmm. and what was the progression from there? Like, what were they telling you to do and what did you ultimately right. choosing? Um, so surgery was shut down, of course. Right, exactly. yeah. And, and so then they're, they're telling me I need to, you know, get on this medication that I need to, you know, to, to make sure that my hormones are stopping. Um, it was, uh, um, estrogen, progesterone fed cancer. And, um, and I just felt so much fear based on everything they were telling me. And I'm like, this is not God. <laughs> God is not, you know, about fear. And, um, and so I just, I really felt like I just needed to find something else. And a very good friend of mine was, um, has gone to, had gone to a natural doctor that both had a PhD as well as did, um, more natural, um, treatments, but had a cancer, um, center as well. And oh, okay. she's like, you need to go to them. And so I just did a televisit and started looking at alternate options and just trying to taken as much information as I could without being overloaded at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And so to how much of a role did prayer play in your process? Oh, huge. Okay. Because I, you, you just couldn't give in to fear and yet you didn't, you know, it was an area I had no expertise in, you know, and it was like, okay, there's, there's something to be found out from this. I knew that my grandmother had the same cancer, actually same breast, everything two of my cousins also. So there was something family oriented going on. Right. And, um, and my biggest prayer was, God, I have a daughter. What do I need to know? What does she need to know? So this doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that was really my long-term it's, if I go, sh if my life is short, if it's long, the, the biggest thing I want is the generational takeaway. Mm -hmm. What, what is the bigger picture of this and what is really underneath, not just let's mask it, you know, treat it and say, well, if it comes back, then it comes back. No, right. there's something yeah. more. Yeah. The root. So it's your, oh, your yeah. first prayer was wisdom for mm -hmm. to know what else was going on. And yeah. then so you had this interview with somebody who was more on the natural side of things. And then did you do your own research or did you have somebody? Guiding yes. You? I, I kept on, on researching because, you know, I had vitamin C infusions, you know, they, they gave me some, some, alternate health things that were great. But then I just kept looking. I was like, okay, I know that there's more. Um, mm -hmm. The vitamin C infusions I could only do for so long. They fried my veins. I mean, they were, it, it was a great way to detox, but, mm -hmm. um, but I had to stop it pretty quick on. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just kept digging. And the, the more things that we found out just about family history, um, genetic testing went nowhere, you know, but, you know, I thought, well, might as well. Sure. Um, and yeah. so, but, but yeah, it, um, it took me on a road of going to practitioners that I never thought I visit, um, mm -hmm. getting acupuncture. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm not, not 
don't know about that. And, you know, sure. I'm like, okay, God, if, if you open the door, I will walk through. I, you know, I am ready to learn anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just, you know, some of the things learned about my sensitivity to, um, electromagnetic pulses, mm -hmm. um, which, I, you know, always poo pooed all of that stuff. And, and also that I do better on a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was the big, I actually made cheese. I milked my own cows. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I remember the first day that, um, the, the health, the natural health doctor that I went to said, you got to take it all out. I sat in my bathtub and I cried. <laughs> I was like, no, no cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, okay. And so what are some of the things, the doors that you like maybe explored and then felt like this wasn't for you? Not necessarily, I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's story is different, but what exactly. were some things that where God closed the door and then you didn't go that way, you went this way. Tell us kind of some of those details. Yeah. So, um, I, I was subscribed to Moxifen mm -hmm. and I really prayed about that. I was like, oh, should I force this, um, to, to go into menopause or not? Um, and I really felt God saying no. Um, and, and so, and that was the very first thing they wanted to do was, was get me on that to shut down my system. And, um, you know, I did a lot of research and, and, and really felt peace about going more natural with, um, with soy and soy has been a huge game changer in my own personal journey. Um, it's really helped balance my, my hormones, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I know there's so much conflicting data, but the more we talked about it with different practitioners, they're like, no, you really got to look at the right data and the right research. That's and, true. um, and That's so, true. so yeah, that was, that was a big one. Um, I had a battle with my surgeon. I ended up getting a double mastectomy mm -hmm. and, um, but she wanted to take my lymph nodes too. And I, I felt God saying, no, there, there, there's no cancer there. Don't need to take them. And she got to the point where she wasn't even going to do the surgery without taking them. And I said, fine, I'm walking away. Yeah. And, and she said, no, you can't do that. You know, this is that whole fear thing going back and forth. I said, oh yes, I can. Yeah. I, and I kind of turned it on her. I said, it's my body, my choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely. Right. Yeah. And, and she ended up doing the surgery without taking them. And I'm so thankful because they're just so, there's so much your lymph nodes do. And, and also with my aerial work, I'm hanging by my arms all the time. And if I would have had any issues with that um, removal, that would have cut that out, out of my story forever. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you had to do a lot of your own research in order to figure yeah. out where, what are the costs and benefits of each one mm -hmm. of the interventions and what do you need to do for you? And then exactly. some of the natural things you, you had this natural doctor uh, kind of giving you some, some insight on what to do. Yeah. So you tried acupuncture and mm -hmm. you, and now you're plant-based anything else yeah. that you ended up doing that you felt like God led you to? Just a lot of supplementation. And also um, when I was doing, um, well, my, my chiropractor sent me to do a massage therapist. I had like issues with my back muscles just after all the surgeries. And, um, and she said, you just got to get loosened up. And so I went to this lady and she goes, I don't normally send, she was a Christian um, chiropractor. She goes, I don't normally send people unless I, I know that they, they're okay with um, with somebody that, cause she had all of this Buddhist stuff in her, her, um, background. <laughs> her, her place, but she's like, she's really good. She knows what she's doing. And if you can look past that, <laughs> right. yeah. you need right. to go to her. So I'm like, okay. So I prayed about it and God just give me, get a lot of peace about it. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm going, I got on her table and I'm like, what is it that I'm feeling? My whole body was humming. Yeah. And, and she goes, well, you're on a biomat. Oh, there and we I go. went, what is that? <laughs> and why do I feel totally different? Right. Um, so I sleep on one now. Interesting. I, I really prayed about that. And okay. I, it seems like as I was working with the nutritionist, she's like, your liver and your spleen don't detox. Mm -hmm. You need something that'll up it. And my blood pressure was going up and up and up. I slept on that mat for two days and my blood pressure was normal. Mm, wow. Okay. So for people who aren't familiar, tell mm -hmm. us what a biomat is. Um, so it's like grounding, but it's like a forced grounding. It's a PEMF um, frequency. And so you can set it at different frequencies that help with, um, with detoxing, with inflammation. Um, and so mine is quite complicated. It also has red light therapy in it too. Um, it is a medical product. Right. And, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this a Beamer 
or is it something else? Um, I, the one that I have, actually, I was looking it up yesterday to share with a friend. Um, it was, it's Healthline, Healthy okay. Line. Yeah. That's the one that I use. Um, and so, yeah. and is that the main change you made with respect to EMF or did you make yeah. other changes too? Okay. That okay. was the main one. Um, my husband, works in IT and wasn't really willing to let everything down at home. (laughs) So I kind of had to combat that myself. Um, But, but yeah, as much as, as you can, I mean, we're just surrounded by it. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. I think so many people, when they go down the EMF road, they get really overwhelmed by all of the things that people tell them they have to do. Right. It's not always all necessary. I feel Mm -hmm. like the the perfect be the enemy of the good, you know? Yes, absolutely. And, and for every person, it's going to be different too. You know, I I try to get my kids on it. Um, and Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, oh, I have to sit still. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and I've also heard, and I don't know, I'm kind of beginning to investigate this a little bit more myself, that sometimes mm-hmm. those grounding mats, depending on the wiring in the house, can make things worse if you oh, have yeah. up wiring and mm-hmm. it'll actually act like an antenna. So it, that also wow. is very independent or dependent. Right. So just kind of watching how you change too. And a lot of my journey was really about that. It's like, I, I'm a physicist by trade, <laughs> by Wow, by training. Okay. And so I see everything as an experiment. And so sure. I'm like, oh, let's try this. And, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm the, the the guinea pig for this. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I kind of wanted to circle back to the soy thing, because I know that that, yeah. as you say, that's a big hot button issue. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of my patients also are concerned about like, isn't soy bad for your hormones and everything. And right. so I agree with you that the, I, the, my main concern with soy is that it's genetically modified unless they say otherwise. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah. So the non-GMO, the organic. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. But as a phytoestrogen, it's much weaker than the estrogen in your body. So it's actually balancing. It's going to block. Absolutely. Maybe. Yes. So mm-hmm. yeah, sure. And I just love that the Holy Spirit was there to guide mm. you and your decisions the whole way through. So where yeah. are you now after all of this? So um, this April, so a couple months, I'll be four years cancer free. Um, so awesome. yeah, April, May, that's when I had my surgery. Um, right. I basically had two tumors that were fully enclosed, so mm-hmm. they didn't travel anywhere. And, um, and what we found because we had to delay the surgery was that when I went on the plant-based diet and I did intermittent fasting, that was another thing that I, I forgot to add, um, that I actually shrunk the tumors before they removed them. Oh, fabulous. And so I know as a fact that keeping that lifestyle will keep the cancer from growing. That's and that was like a huge, you know, way for God to show me, this is how I want you to live, right. you know, and this is how I designed you to live. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, my husband and I went on a cruise a couple of weeks ago. That is so hard to stay plant-based. And also I'm gluten-free sure. because my daughter is gluten-free. It's just yeah. easier to cook the home. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, um, but when you have a big, why you just do it. Mm -hmm. Nope. Absolutely. That Mm -hmm. makes sense. So, and then I, um, from kind of what you told me earlier, I was under the impression that the aerial stuff was after. So, yeah. So I was already doing aerial silks before that. Um, but, but God just increased my passion. Um, just in the last year, we found out that my daughter has EDS and that I'm the carrier. Um, and so I can't sit still for very long. My whole body, all the connective tissue just like solidifies <laughs> and, and I kept going, why do I hurt so much when I sit still yet? I get up and I, you know, I do aerial and I just feel free. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like this release for me to say, this is what you're supposed to be doing more of. Mm-hmm. And, and it's Okay you know, everything else will take care of itself. We've automated a lot of things on my website for the nonprofit. And, um, and so, yeah, so now I run an aerial studio. I perform, I have, um, nine students I train for three hours a week and they're between the ages of nine and 17. And we perform all around the area on a 20 foot rig. <laughs> so awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So you sound like you're awfully busy between that and all the, you know, the yes. stuff and, and whatever. <laughs> So yeah, that's amazing that you managed to keep all that going. Um, yeah, I got lots of good helpers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what do you want to make sure that you leave with our audience? What message would you like to, to leave? 
the biggest thing is that God, God knows the solution to whatever you're dealing with. We Amen. just have to turn to him. Yeah. And, and it's not, you know, we, we, when we hit a diagnosis or we, we have this health issue, we say, well, what do the experts say? And, or what does this person's story say? And, you know, a lot of that will contribute to what God wants to tell us, but we don't live somebody else's story. That's and right. we, we aren't a product of research. Right. <laughs> we are a child of God. And, and he knows specifically what we need and we have to turn to him. And those turning points, those places where we, um, we're given the chance to really hone in on those things with God, we got to take it as an opportunity, not look at it as a devastation. And this is like ruining my life. No, it's, it's changing your life right. and God wants it better. And right. this is how he's getting your attention. Absolutely. Yep. He promises wisdom if we approach him and ask him for it and he will exactly. give Exactly. And there's great people like you that, you know, can point us in the right direction when we're confused and we don't know, you know, where, where to go. Yeah, absolutely. So where can people go to learn more about you? Um, you can go to spedhomeschool.com and that is where my nonprofit for the, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> the but that is where you can go and get um, information about homeschooling and special education. And, um, and yeah, and some awesome. more information about me. Yeah. Cool. Well, I will link to that in the show notes and thank you for sharing your story, Peggy. This has been really inspirational. Absolutely. Thank you.